Hey everyone, I have an update for you on the Switch Pro. There's actually obviously been a lot of conversation about it. We actually recently did a rumor video up here, and a lot of the info in that rumor video is still worth paying attention to. But one aspect of it, as an update to that rumor, that people did discover after the fact is the 1440p stuff uh, saying that the system can do native 1440p was based on a faked uh, data dump of Project Triangle Strategy. Now, I'm not saying that the data wasn't actually data mined from the demo of Project Triangle Strategy that exists out there, but that's not what we're, we're worried about here. We're worried about the fact that someone faked information from that demo gleaming an extra mode beyond 1080p uh, showing a 1440p mode which obviously cannot exist on the current switch there is no way to even output a 1440p signal from the nintendo switch dock so it made people think man that must be about switch pro but uh, it turned out that part was fake. That doesn't mean all the rest of the information was fake. It just means where this information originally came from, the 1440p stuff is. But there is something uh, to talk about despite uh, that part of that rumor being fake and maybe casting doubt on you guys on that quote-unquote big leak. And that is, well, Nate Drake. So for those who don't know who Nate Drake is, he's been around in this industry as a leaker, quote-unquote leaker, for a long time. Uh, he has, gosh, a decade or so uh, going back to NeoGAF days. Now he's on Reset Era. Uh, and he has been verified by multiple people. And his information is typically pretty accurate. He doesn't always get everything right. But I don't know that there's a leaker out there that ever gets everything right because plans change. Uh, sources are sometimes given uh, misinformation uh, intentionally. So like Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft and Activision EA can kind of like, you know, weed out the bad apples uh, from their companies that might be leaking things. Uh, and obviously sometimes things are leaked intentionally through these people uh, to build hype. And it's possible that Nintendo might be floating some of this stuff out here. But honestly, it seems like the reason that Heat is picking up with the Switch Pro is that dev units appear to be out in the wild. Uh, we're not going to get screenshots of them because uh, that company would basically be lambasted by Nintendo and they'd be breaking all sorts of laws to do that. So we're not going to see anything on the dev units until after the Switch Pro is announced. But here is what Nate Drake, an industry insider who has been very accurate in a whole bunch of things industry-wide. I I'm presuming that he works in the industry somewhere. I don't know, as a video game developer or whatever. He doesn't really reveal full details of any of his sources. Um, just he has a history and a track record. And he has made some interesting statements. Um, first off, uh, he says, we won't really talk ab about the tech specs other than what I've already said. And he reiterates, it has DLSS, so deep learning super sampling, something we've speculated before, and it has 4K functionality, which would be how a Switch could end up outputting at 4K, which, by the way, the 4K stuff actually comes from a data mine of Nintendo Switch. The, the latest firmware update already has a mention of 4K in that firmware update. So the idea that Switch could output at 4K, folks, isn't even something that's debatable. Now, before I say anything else here, I want to remind you, we do have a giveaway going on right now for a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card. Head down to the description or the pinned comment to enter. Now, what's interesting here, beyond the fact that we've already seen the 4K mentioned within the current firmware of Switch, uh, it's that... While he says uh, he doesn't want to really go deeper than that right now, he does note uh, a few extra things when he's responding to a few people. This happened last week on Thursday. Uh, first off, Super Mario Day 64 was brought up. Great guy. It was on my latest podcast. Uh, and he does mention, because uh, someone brought up, didn't Super Mario Dave share an official-looking document with Nintendo of America's marketing plans for fiscal year 2016? Uh, and... It, truth be told, Super Metal Dave 64 legitimately had a source at that time that worked at Nintendo. And Natrick points out that he actually shared marketing budget figures, which immediately exposed his source. Uh, and he did it for validation to prove he had a single source. And technically, he ruined a person's job all for internet clout. That's the way he feels. I don't obviously know the full story there, and I'm not going to pester Super Metal Dave 64 about it. But clearly, he had a, a legitimate source and maybe revealed a bit too much of what that source showed him. To be fair to Super Mario Day, the source shouldn't be giving out that kind of information. Most 
of this leak stuff, if Nintendo doesn't want it out there, the people probably shouldn't be putting it out there. But where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't mind when things come from, uh, say, you know, manufacturing lines, and you just happen to have a worker on the line say something to people. And, like, that's what a lot of the Wall Street Journal reporting over time has been. It's just been a lot of people in manufacturing talking about what's being worked on on their manufacturing lines. But Nate Drake then goes on to say uh, that he's 100% confident it's going to have DLSS and 4K functionality. Uh, I've not heard anything on the other two. And the other two are about Nintendo Switch Online revamp, which literally hasn't been mentioned by anyone. And Mario Kart 9, which was in a prior rumor, but also kind of he hasn't heard anything about it. And then he, to be fair, he didn't even hear anything about Splatoon 3 either. So a lot of Nintendo's games are starting to be kept really close to the vest on their reveals. Uh, hence why we had literally nothing leaked about Mario Kart 9. Now, technically, Splatoon 3 and the entirety of the Direct was leaked right before the Direct landed. So that is something that happened, and there clearly is somebody out there uh, in the Reddit sphere that has access to some stuff at Nintendo that maybe they shouldn't, or maybe it's a rogue employee. But that's neither here nor there. I'm closely paying attention to Reddit for any future leaks on anything, whether it's hardware, games, obviously Zelda's 35th anniversary and the plans for that, all that. But he goes on to mention something about the handheld version. So, uh, the great Mighty Pooh, God, I love that reference to uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, uh, said over on Reset Era, uh, only want a yes or no answer, and you don't have to give that, but will portable mode be a nice upgrade? And then Nate Drake responds and says, if what I've heard is accurate, yes. So think about that. Think about that. It's interesting um, talking about this kind of stuff. Um, he mentions quite clearly that he's not even sure what the tech specs are for this. Now, the last rumors we had had Ampere going on. But Natrick, like, like put it out here in response to somebody else. Um, when just talking about... Um, like information about Switch Pro and how much out there is accurate and how much is just kind of speculative. So Dakil over on Reset Era said, I also forgot to mention that I find the Think For Yourself Question Authority intro on his YouTube channel, again, talking about Supermodel Dave, uh, to be cringeworthy. And Nate Drake just says, you know what? It's a passive way of saying he's better than the media outlets that have sources. Um, that's his opinion. Uh, remember, he said Eurogamer had no source on NX when they showed the tablet design and NVIDIA was the provider. This is way back when, I mean, he's cop to this. Uh, Super Mario Day was dead wrong about the hardware inside Switch. Uh, Eurogamer sources were a thousand percent correct. Um, and he says, I won't really talk more about tech specs than I have, but it does have DLSS and 4K. No reason to go deeper than that right now. It's enough to illustrate the device in a is a meaningful upgrade. First party support will span the new hardware and current Switch for at least a couple of years. That's extremely notable. We were shown as much yesterday, and I talked about it on my latest podcast. Yes, Nate Drake does have a podcast. So, what's interesting. Uh, is that he's essentially saying for at least the next two years, the OG Nintendo Switch is going to get all the games. But what you can also infer from this is that after the next two years, the OG Switch might not be getting every first-party game anymore. Why is that? Why would he mention that just for at least a couple of years, the OG Switch is going to get all of the games coming out. So Breath of the Wild 2 going to be on your OG Switch. Splatoon 3 going to be on your OG Switch. If Mario Kart 9 comes out this year or next year, going to be on your OG Switch. Whatever Nintendo has coming this year, next year, maybe very early into 2023, will be on the OG Switch. But why does he specifically mention that at least for a couple of years? Because it's inferring that Nintendo might be going with a different strategy with Switch hardware moving forward. This is a strategy I have talked about at length on this channel for a couple of years that I think makes sense for the market Switch is in and also makes sense because they don't really have any direct competition that's meaningful. I think the GPD Win 3 coming out is like the only thing on the market. The GPD Win family of systems is like the only thing that comes close and it's really more closely tied to PC gaming than it is console gaming like Nintendo is. Plus, they don't have like that exclusive IP that Nintendo has to really push units. They just have the marketing sale of play your PC games on the go. So here's my thing. I think uh, what Nintendo needs to do is adopt the phone strategy. You guys know what the phone strategy is, right? This is an iPhone 12, just a basic iPhone 12, nothing fancy, no pro version, no Max, whatever, right? Just a basic iPhone 12. If I don't upgrade this phone, new applications that come out three generations of iPhone from today 
will still work on iPhone 12. Now, maybe the battery life sucks and there's other things Apple does here to make me want to upgrade sooner because, you know, they that's just what they do. Um, in general, battery after two years, three years with, a, with an iPhone is just dog shit. Um, and that's by design to try to convince you to upgrade to the next phone instead of replacing the battery because it's very hard to replace batteries in these. But here's the thing. I'm not saying Nintendo go the Apple route in terms of making hardware that just fails, which, <laughs> oddly enough, Joy-Con drift. But what I am saying is that they should go the phone route in releasing new platforms that slowly phase out old ones. So Switch Pro wouldn't be considered a next-gen Switch because all the games coming to it for the first couple years would still be on the old Switch. Of course, that's also true of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. You kind of get what I'm getting at here. It's a slow phase out of the old systems. So what would happen here is that Switch Lite and the, and the current Switch would still be relevant for another couple of years, as it should be. And then when Switch Pro is here, after a couple of years, Nintendo's games will start to massively focus on the Pro and phase out support for the original Switch, again, pushing sales to the Nintendo Switch Pro. Now, they're not going to just suddenly roll, uh, you know, roll into the Pro and just, you know, get to 2023 and be like, yeah, we're done with the OG Switch without plans. What is going to happen is by the time they decide they want to announce the what we're going to call Switch 2, you know, but you know, whatever, Switch 2, uh, by the time they want to announce that in, say, 2023, the games that come to that platform, the games that are planned to be on that platform will also be on Switch Pro, but they will not be on the original Switch. So basically, at all times, there are, there's like a gen to a gen and a half uh, of support among games coming to switch from nintendo obviously we don't know what third parties are going to do they'll always whenever hardware exists third parties always have the option to make their games just for that hardware but the point i'm trying to make is that basically the switch pro and the switch will coexist and all games will come out when the next gen system for nintendo's announced games will go to that next gen system switch pro and they'll phase out the old one basically what this creates is that every single switch coming out in the future for as long as nintendo wants to keep this going will essentially have a five to six year shelf life and it'll have a natural transition into new hardware which is what happens with phones the reason the phone market still blossoms even though there's new products every single year isn't because people upgrade every single year it's about the slow transition into new hardware that's rather seamless and people almost don't even notice it's happening that's what's crazy about it. And that's the best thing Nintendo can do to keep that Switch family going for 10, 15, 20 years if they could somehow pull it off. Yes, they could have upgrades. Yes, they could do different things. Yes, they can try out different ideas, different technologies along the way. But if they keep the base concept of a portable console that can dock with your TV, they can literally iterate, experiment, innovate, and make things more powerful and better designed along the way without alienating consumers. The number one concern people have for Switch Pro is the idea of exclusive Nintendo games on the platform. But by the time we're talking about games on Switch Pro that will not be coming to the OG Switch, it's because those games are going to the next gen Switch. This is what I was hoping, in a way, Microsoft and Sony were gonna do. They're not. Technically, Microsoft and Sony are making their games backwards compatible to the original PlayStation 4 and the original uh, Xbox One, and they decided we're just gonna phase out PS4 Pro and we're gonna phase out Xbox One X entirely. They're just saying, screw it. Those mid-gen upgrades, we're just done making that system. We're not making those mid-gen upgrade systems anymore. Go buy our new platform. I think that's a mistake. I think they should have phased out the original hardware, kept that, and just let it all coexist in the same market. They decided to go against that, and I think that technically is holding games back on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, at least for the next year or two, as they continue to support the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 OG user base. Again, I don't think that's a smart business decision, and I don't think Nintendo's going to go down that route. Now, obviously, this isn't talking about affecting sales of a PlayStation 5 Series X. They're doing fine, but... This maintains momentum for Nintendo, that as long as they keep releasing huge games every single year, there won't really be a reason for Switch to stop selling as long as 
people feel like there's options in that Switch marketplace that fit their needs. Does the original Switch and the giant bezels feel a little dated? Does it, does it not feel quite right? That's okay. There's a sleeker, better Switch out there. Everything plays on everything. You know, this phone might feel dated in a couple years. You can still play games on it. But, I mean, you also have the option to upgrade to either a, a slightly a, a cheaper upgrade that came out a couple years before or the latest and greatest if you want uh, and just move on trucking ahead. I think that's the strategy Nintendo's doing, and I think that's the strategy Nate Drake is sort of unintentionally hinting towards, uh, although we're a little bit too far out uh, from knowing for sure if Nintendo wants to go with that strategy. So, again, big thing. DLSSS, oh, DLSSS, DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, 4K, and massive improvements to handheld mode seem to be locked in. All right, folks, I'm Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this Switch Pro rumor leak video thingy, uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.